There must be simpler models of neurons and neuronal dynamics out there, and indeed there are. The question is, how simple can you make things while still keeping some sort of interesting dynamics going on? We're going to look at a very simple model, a supremely simple model. Consider the following. We have one variable, x, that corresponds to the activity level of a neuron. This is going to be a continuous time system, so x depends on t. And here is the simple differential equation. dx dt equals minus x plus theta. Theta is going to be some positive constant called the activation strength of the system. Now, this is supremely simple. If we assume an initial condition that is positive, but below this activation strength, it's clear what happens. This is an affine system. We have a single stable equilibrium. Well, that's boring. We need to come up with something more interesting than that. And here's what we're going to do. The big idea is that we have many such simple neurons, and they are all wired together. They are networked just like neurons are. So let's assume that our vector x is a vector of activity levels for n neurons. We have x1, x2, all the way up through xn. Now, if this initial condition, again, satisfies the inequality that these xi's are positive, but below that constant theta, then what we want to know is how do we network these together? How do we model the influence that one neuron has on its neighbors? Well, here's the model that we're going to explore. Let's consider W to be an n by n matrix of connection strengths between the neurons. We're going to make a couple of assumptions. First of all, along the diagonal, the connection strengths are all zero. Off the diagonal, if I look at the entries w, i, j, these are all going to be non-positive. This is what is called a competitive model. Each neuron is sort of competing against its neighbors for influence. The name of the model that we're going to consider is called the threshold linear network model. We'll say more on this later. Here's the setup. dx dt equals minus x, just like before, but then we're adding the influence that one neuron has on another through w x. We're using that matrix w as a linear operator. And then we add the activation strength theta. We're adding that as a vector, but each entry has that same constant theta in it. Now, as is, this is kind of boring. This is just an affine system. It's going to have a unique stable equilibrium, but this is a threshold linear network. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that term wx plus theta and threshold it. That's what I mean by bracketing it and putting this little plus sign as a superscript. What that means is each entry is set equal to zero if it winds up being negative. So it can have a positive influence or it can have no influence at all. It cannot have a negative influence. So that's the threshold linear network model. Again, those W terms, the interaction terms, they are non-positive. They're, they're pulling things down. The theta, that activation is positive. It's pulling things up and we threshold things because without that thresholding, this is an affine system, unique equilibrium, stable and boring. But with that thresholding, it acts kind of like a non-linearity. And you get some interesting things depending on W. Here are a couple of cases. One called strong uniform inhibition. This is where all of the off diagonal terms, W, I, J, are equal to a fixed constant that is strictly less than negative one. In this case, one can show that the system has many stable equilibria that correspond to one per neuron. So it's kind of like a winner-take-all situation, and it's kind of boring. That's not how neural networks really work. The other 
case that one might consider is called weak uniform inhibition. That means that all of these entries, wij for i not equal to j, are going to be bigger than negative 1, but still less than 0. This also is not the most interesting thing. What happens in this case is that every neuron winds up falling into lockstep. You have a unique, stable equilibrium, a sync, a sync in the sense of synchronization. Every neuron does exactly the same thing. And that, too, is boring. So how do you get to something that is not boring? Well, what if we have a mixture of strong and weak inhibitions? That is indeed where things get very interesting. And it is at this point that I must point out to you an excellent paper, the 2016 preprint of Morrison, de Garatu, Itzkov, and Curto, where I learned about these threshold linear networks and where they prove a whole bunch of fascinating results. This is a very well-written paper. You can read it with the things that we have learned together, and you can understand almost everything that is in that paper. I'm not going to stop here. We're going to keep going and talk about a couple of the results that are contained therein.